EA Sports WRC now supports VR. Yeah, you heard me right. Six months after the game's release, it was time for EA to come up with a much-awaited VR support. Now, is it good? Is it bad? Well, there's only one way to find out. Huh? Ever since the announcement EA made about a month ago, I tried to get my hands on a VR headset, so everything you're gonna hear from me about this whole experience comes from a guy who is very new to all this VR thing, okay? Maybe you don't own a headset and you're thinking about buying one to test this out for yourself, but luckily for you, I bought up this MetaQuest 2 from a friend who bought it to show virtual house tours to his clients. So I will be very honest with this review, and I will tell you about all the things I like and the things I dislike about my whole experience playing EA Sports WRC in VR. So after a few hours getting the settings right, from the lens distance to lens distortion, bit rates, frame rates, resolutions, etc, it was finally time to fire up the game. EA was very nice to share with us on their website, the link is in the description, a few graphic presets we can start with, and depending on everyone's hardware, you can work your way up or down from here. I have an RTX 3080 graphics card, and here it says that with the upscaler set on quality and graphic preset on high, the game should run fine at 80 FPS. So that'll be my starting point. After I've done all my settings, it was time to enter time trial, choose a location, and a track, get a car, and finally, we reach the cockpit. Now let's start with the cons. At first glance, there will be a lot of motion sickness involved, even though you're not moving at all. Your brain sees movement and tries to make the body react to it, but after a few tries, eventually, some rewiring happens in your head, and you get over the motion sickness thing. I recommend starting with an asphalt location, because they usually don't have big crests and jumps that will turn your stomach upside down, and after you start to get used to it, move to more aggressive dirt and snow terrains. The next thing I want to talk about is overexposure. This problem was in the game from the very start, but along the way, EA has sorted it out a little. Some stages had a ton of brightness and the colors would look washed out, but now in VR, I can see this problem has reappeared. I played a little with the contrast settings within the headset menu to kinda get the colors to look better, however, the exposure problem was still present. I set the headset brightness as slow as possible, and from here, I had to adjust and readjust the in-game brightness for each stage. In some locations like Mexico, I had to lower the brightness to about 20% for the tracks to stop looking overexposed and actually see something. But lowering these too much will make the menus and all the other screens look extremely dark, making everything look weird. Since this is just a beta version, a lot of things can change until the release version. Now let's talk about the pros. On the bright side of things, one feature that really helps is the fact that you can look at where the road is going. Let's take for example a hairpin. Without a VR headset, the driver will always be facing forward. So every time I get close to a hairpin, I have to guess how big that hairpin will be if the co-driver doesn't have any more details about it like large or acute. This meant that I always had to make small adjustments with the steering, brakes and the throttle because I always approximated the line as either too tight or too wide. Only after I made enough runs on the track to kinda memorize that particular hairpin and how to take it in the fastest time possible. And even after, if I'm not 100% concentrated on the game, chances are that I will still make some mistakes and go on a bad trajectory. But while wearing the headset, I can look at that corner apex before the hairpin and see exactly how much I have to rotate the wheel, how much braking I have to apply and how much gas I have to give to the car to be able to get the perfect line. Another thing I love about playing in VR is the fact that I can take more aggressive turns and with much more confidence. This applies more on the dirt and snow tracks, where the grip is low, and to take a turn as fast as possible, you have to go sideways. And going sideways without being able to look at where you're going is kinda scary and you can only take a guess. But with repetition, you finally get it right. However, with a VR headset, you can always look at the direction the car is traveling, and you're also in full control of the trajectory all the time to make small adjustments if needed, even though the front end of the car is pointed at some rocks inside the corner. 
When racing on tracks I haven't raced in a long time or when trying new tracks, uh, yes, I still have tracks from the base game I haven't raced on, especially the long ones. What I want to say here is that now I can go sideways on a turn and look out the window for any obstacles along the way, if maybe the road gets narrower, and the most important, how the next turn will look like and where it starts. This way I'm already prepared for the next turn, so I can throw the car from one corner to another smooth and fast at the same time. Without the headset, every time I find myself in the same situation, the back end of the car may hit something or after I take a turn I have to get the car straight for a moment to be able to see the next one so I can calculate the trajectory. Another gorgeous aspect of wearing a VR is that you can look at everything inside the car. While on a break from the racing, you can take a closer look at the dashboard, steering wheel, seats, all the equipment, all the electronics, the roll cage in the back and a lot of other stuff that interests you. Heck, you can even read the base notes. Whoa, this guy is creepy. This makes everything feel more immersive. You can truly get a glimpse of how rally drivers from all the eras must have felt like being in the cockpit of some of the most famous rally cars that ever existed. For the customizability, if you headed into the settings, you surely saw that the first tab has changed. There you will find all the settings to customize your VR experience. From the size of the HUD, the camera height, to the virtual monitor size which is this screen you see like in a cinema room when you are in the menus. And many other things. One thing I missed though when looking through the settings was the driver. Even if the game is set to show the driver and the wheel in the game preferences tab, the driver is invisible, unless you go into the VR setting and activate it from there. Now without a headset, I normally play with a dash camera which doesn't show the driver and the wheel, because I'm the actual driver and I hold the wheel. But in VR, it's best to see the steering wheel and the driver to get a more immersive experience, otherwise it looks like a ghost is driving the car. Quick note here on the performance. As I mentioned above, I have an RTX 3080 graphics card, also 32GB of RAM, and a Ryzen 7 3700X, which according to user benchmark is just 11% under the Intel i9 they used in the MetaQuest 2 preset from their website. And I can almost use the same advanced graphics settings I use when playing on a monitor, with many of them set on ultra, without having any problems, frame drops or anything else. So 80 FPS is achievable on this PC configuration. Now, even with more advantages and disadvantages, there is still something that will make me put the headset aside and continue to play on the monitor. For the time I had this VR headset, I tried a few games that I had in my library and support VR like Dirt Rally 2.0, Euro Truck Simulator 2, Elite Dangerous, this is a spaceship simulator for anyone who didn't hear about it. Now for me, one thing all these games had in common, even on high settings, was bad graphics. Now hold your thoughts, I know what you're about to say, but yeah, I have a USB 3.2 cable, it supports over 2 gigs of transfer speed, it's set on a decent resolution, and still, I don't know how to put it, but I can literally count the pixels. I did some research and this comes mostly from the LCD screen and the lenses this headset is equipped with. I'm sure many of you guys out there may not have this problem, but as I said, this is purely a personal opinion. But don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that the MetaQuest 2 is not good or anything, because I tried a few games within the VR's library with cartoony graphics and it was extremely immersive with all the stuff that you can do with those controllers and I truly enjoyed it. But playing a game that tries to mimic real-world graphics with HD textures, dense particles, rich foliage, etc, for me it's just not gonna do it. The main monitor I normally use to play games on has a 2K resolution and 1.07 billion colors and I have to get really close to it to even see jagged areas, let alone count pixels. So my final answer is yes! I love playing EAWRC in VR, I am looking forward to the release version with all the bugs resolved and many other improvements, but not with the MetaQuest 2, just because of the big pixels which put a lot of strain on my eyes. I'm sure that when this technology makes more advancements, or maybe if I can get my hands on a newer VR headset from let's say 2023 or 2024, I will definitely try this again. But right now I will continue to enjoy EA Sports WRC on my trusty 2K colorful monitor. If you guys happen to have a MetaQuest 2, please let me know in the comments how this experience feels to you. For more EA Sports WRC videos, make sure you subscribe to my channel, I have a lot of content with tons of value and more is coming. As always, see you on the track, bye bye!